Okay, then, as I was saying, last sprint in last, um, we're gonna do a few lightning talks. Uh, if you have a lightning talk and you haven't sent these slides, please send them to me at, well, my contact information is here. The email should work fine. Uh, or Telegram, you can find me on the attendees list uh, as well, or, well, you'll find a way. Um, and then I'm start, so I am introducing myself. Uh, my name is Alesh, and I am gonna talk about this topic, which isn't mine, but uh, Harald, who was working on it, couldn't make it to last. And since I had convinced him <laughs> to do the talk, I said, all right, I'll do it. So, um, I might not know all of the answers of the questions you might have, but since it's a lightning talk, there's no questions. So, win-win, <laughs> or lose-win, anyway. <laughs> so, what are we gonna talk about? Um, what happened here was that a uh, somewhat famous um, game manufacturer told us that we needed better tools to making sure that our software always works. Um, and we thought, okay, let's put together some kind of framework. Uh, obviously, we've done that in numerous times in history before. Uh, so we had to do something different. And when Harold started to think about this, he came to the conclusion of, um, so what you want is you have an app. You want to make sure that this app is uh, doing what it's meant to do. Uh, what historically most frameworks have been doing has been like checking that uh, the graphics are correct and if they haven't changed since the last version or whatever uh, then you're happy the problem with this is that uh, well you end up using very weird algorithms to compare screenshots and then you cannot test things like color schemes and things like that so we thought how about um, we don't uh, use the graphical output, but we use the accessibility API, so how um, somebody who cannot use a graphical interface would be interacting, interacting with the application. This way you get somewhat more semantic information uh, about the things, like you can ask which buttons I have, which, what, what text do they have, uh, has this uh, property changed, which is much easier to do with uh, code than actually comparing images and so on and so forth. So we're using um, uh, ADSPI, which is the traditional free desktop uh, standard for accessibility to query the, the application. Um, uh, I guess that why is it makes sense, right? Like you want to make sure that things uh, stay working uh, and you want to be able to uh, well, check how things work. Uh, we'll look at an example a bit later. We're using, like I said, ATSPI, um, also Wayland. So how these tests work uh, at the technical level is that we spawn uh, Queen Wayland uh, compositor, and then we spawn the uh, process within. Uh, and then we have a Python script that uses uh, Appium. Appium, which is the, top, um, the thing I, I talked about before, and then, um, well, I skimmed through it. But uh, Appium is a toolkit that was uh, created on top of Selenium, which has been uh, a framework that has been used for uh, testing uh, webs. Uh, and Appium was done by the cool API people to uh, be able to do the same with, with apps. Uh, something that I find quite interesting about this approach is that it lets us leverage a lot of technology that has been developed for um, well, from this not really Linux kind of wall or our Linux, if, if you get what I mean, uh, like there's been a lot of development that has been happening outside of our realm. And we're just reusing it to make sure that uh, our tools are, are working well. Um, so if you don't mind looking at a little bit of code, we can take a look at this right now, which is the code for uh, a test. So this is the test that we have now to uh, there you go to um, make sure that discover, which is our software center, uh, the the Flatpak integration still works. Um, I don't want you to look at all of the code because it's kind of boring and a, a little bit boilerplate. But what we can see here is that we're setting up the system a little bit with some stuff. So what we want to do is not test that 
for example, Flatpak works on our computer. What we want to make sure is that if we put our discover into another computer, it's it's gonna work fine. So, for example, here it's taking um, uh, like an empty system uh, and just adding Flathub into it and well, making sure it doesn't have uh, calcium inside, calcium being any application that we wanted to test. And then it performs things within, for example, here we can see that it looks for a uh, search field and then it checks whether it's focused and it sends the calcium text uh, and then enter to look it up and then it tries to do what you would do as a user or maybe as an ATSPI user if you want um, to do all of the things like here is doing the installation. Well, it checks that there's an, uh, an application description. It triggers the install and then the removal eventually. So um, what this test will be doing is launching a discover, searching for calcium, uh, making sure that everything is more or less in place, uh, installing, uh, and then on uninstalling it. And if it didn't crash the or, well, everything was able to be done, um, well, it will succeed. And actually it works, right? Like actually um, yesterday uh, I was looking into Qt6 uh, port of Discover. The, the, the test was done in, in Qt5 and it wasn't passing and actually was talking to Harold saying, why is this not working? It must be a problem with the infrastructure. And no, it was actually Discover that was broken. And uh, I was being weird. Um, what I wanted to show you here is what it looks like for um, for GitLab. Um, so one of the of the advantages is that uh, as soon as you, since you still have the graphical aspects of it, because like I said, it's a Wayland session, you can uh, look through the artifacts. Uh, and, and when something is not working or anything, you can still uh, compare them visually and see where the application is stuck. Something that we've been working on, for example, as well, is um, like recording a video of this whole process. So if anything goes wrong, then you can uh, look at the video, see what happened without having to maybe run your the, the test locally or whatever, because well, not everything that happens on the CI ha will happen on your system. And uh, well, we still no questions, so probably good time to go into the next uh, lining talk. I don't know if there's time. It's weird being host and talking. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, game development is next. Who does game development on Linux?